Before that, I want to set the scene because you know this is like a shift in terms of the approach that we've been taking. We have been talking a lot, um, I mean, at least in this session, about what has been done in Hong Kong in the past 10 years. You know, Hong Kong has been a leader uh, since 2006 in terms of research, in terms of working together with the industry, and in terms of you know pushing and working together with uh, local governments, the Hong Kong government in terms of policy intervention and regulations. Uh, first of all, you know, we've done the emission inventory, you know, that's been published and completed in 2012, but the basis is actually 2007. So this is baseline, this is really important uh, as the basis to, you know, number, number one, understand the extent of ship emissions in your area, and then number two, to try to find out the most effective way and cost effective sometimes, and also time effective way to control and reduce ship emissions. Um, so what we have done with this research is we use new assumptions, we've used a very up-to-date uh, state-of-the-art methodology based on ship activities. Um, of course, we still need to know a bit about you know, the, the fuel and the quality of fuel that's been used by vessels in the operation. Um, and we use uh, AIS data. I think this is probably the first time in Asia, at least, that AIS data has been you know, incorporated in a ship emission inventory. So I think we've done some groundbreaking work, and this is the first in, in Asia, definitely. But you know, this is just the science part and the first step. We engaged since 2008 with uh, different shipping industry players, not just the shipping lines, but also terminal operators, the truckers, um, of course, government uh, officials were in the room as we met and discussed shipping emission as an emerging uh, problem uh, 10 years ago. And we share the, the findings, the numbers, the signs, but then try to figure out and to plot a way in which we can work with the industry most effectively and to bring them to table so that we can come up with something, some solutions. And what we have got is this voluntary um, industry-led uh, fairways charter, and uh, which basically means that they are paying out of their pocket to use cleaner fuel while their vessels are actually birthing in Hong Kong starting from uh, 2011. So in 2015, starting from 1st of July, Hong Kong becomes the first port and city in Asia to regulate ship emissions through uh, a fuel, uh, super fuel rule. So starting from 1st of July last year, we required ships that's birthing in Hong Kong, ocean going vessels, to use 0.5% sulfur or better fuel or equivalent fuel that would you know have equivalent impact in terms of emission reduction. And this is you know, going to, you know, as Professor Lau just showed in his analysis, you know, uh, it, it brings about significant um, air quality improvements in the city, especially in the neighborhood and communities close to the container terminal areas. Now, this is so far so good, and this is basically all about Hong Kong, and we are proud and we are pleased that we have done all that we have done. But as I said, you know, in this particular region, in the Pearl River Delta region, we have three of the largest container ports in the world, including Shenzhen, Hong Kong, and Guangzhou. Within this small stretch of water and area, probably in terms of the density of maritime activities, this is the highest in the world. We have the busiest port clusters in this particular region. So this is one of the reasons why I think taking a regional approach makes sense. But then more importantly, you know, when I showed you this picture, when we are happy about you know, the outcome, we now know where are the emission hotspots in Hong Kong. The limitation is that you can see the boundary of Hong Kong waters here. So basically, this is a Hong Kong specific emission inventory. Beyond this boundary, we have no idea how and you know, in what scales in terms of emission has been produced by ships. So you know, if you go back to you know, my original questions you know, about the regional approach, what we need from the region is the, is the baseline. You know, the starting point is we need to have a regional emission inventory. So you know, only having a good emission inventory for just Hong Kong is not good enough. We need to have also uh, an emission inventory showing the extent of ship emissions within the Pearl River Delta region. Um, but you know, I am just going to show you some numbers. When Hong Kong is compared to the PLD in terms of the contributions to ship emissions, of course, the PLD is actually contributing a lot more. Whether it's SO2 or NOx, you can tell straight away, or PM, you know, that's a gap in terms of the, the, the share. Okay? 
But when the two are combined, we are talking about the region as a whole. So please focus on the bottom uh, row, which says total. So these are the numbers that in future we should be looking at as a basis for regional collaboration. So we are talking about 76,000 plus tonne of SO2 uh, for a year. We're talking about more than 1,200,000 tonnes of NOx, and NOx is definitely a big problem, uh, even from the shipping sector that needs to be cleaned up. Okay, so this is, you know, uh, the broader picture in terms of distribution of uh, ship emissions, you know, when we just look at Hong Kong or PRD. Now, um, if I further break it down by the municipalities within the Pearl River Delta region, then of course you can tell, you know, Hong Kong, Guangzhou and Sunjun because of the port size and because of all the activities that's been, you know, in operation in those ports. Emissions contribution from these three locations are the highest. Okay, but again, you know, I really hope you would focus on the last row because once again, we want to talk about the PLT as a whole. Um, you've heard this morning uh, from other speakers about the domestic emission control area policy that's been rolled out by the Ministry of Transportation uh, last year and, you know, which came into effect early this year. Um, and, you know, the details are here and I'm not going to go into that because probably you all know about the progressive targets or timeline related to that plan. But what I want to say is actually with this DECA plan, it kind of gives the PRD a default timeline to act. Now, before this DECA plan, you know, Hong Kong is working closely with Shenzhen and Guangzhou to try to unify some of the standards or practices in terms of ship emission control. Okay, but there's no definite deadline for these locations to say, okay, by that time we have to agree on something. It's based on, you know, really goodwill and the ability to work together. And sometimes they are high, sometimes they are lows. You, we all know, we all understand that. But with this plan, actually it sets the deadline. So by the 1st of January next year, 2017, all the key ports, including Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, and Zhuhai in the Pearl River Delta region, they have to, you know, use 0.5% silver fuel at birth. Now, of course, Hong Kong already have that silver fuel rule signed from last year, and Sunjun starting from 1st of October this year. But then right now, we don't have Guangzhou, we don't have Zhuhai also doing the same thing. But with this plan, actually, they only have, you know, if we count it from today, two more weeks to, you know, to be in the same, on the same page as Hong Kong and Sunjun in that particular regard. Together with the two provinces next to Shanghai, they, you know, basically agree to enforce the sulfur fuel rule, 0.5% sulfur fuel rule, starting from 1st of April this year. And this is ahead of the MOT DECA plan. If Hong Kong and the Pearl Delta, including Shenzhen and Guangzhou, is going to be a step ahead of the national plan, then our recommendation is, you know, think about actually switching directly to 0.1% silver fuel by 2019. This is going to drive not just the Pearl River Delta region, but the rest of China to also move into that direction. This is ambitious. Okay, this is aggressive, but this is something probably doable with good coordination. And I think coming from Shenzhen and Hong Kong and Guangzhou, uh, you know, the, the, the regions or the location that has started the whole thing 10 years ago. I think this is, you know, uh, perfectly fitting. Secondly, um, again, this morning we heard about not just problems of ship emissions uh, in terms of SO2 and PM, but also NOx emissions. So I would encourage and recommend this region to start thinking about solid and concrete steps in terms of controlling NOx emission. So what should be done? You know, we should put some emphasis in terms of the denox technology, try to, you know, um, do the cost-benefit analysis, try to see if it is effective, and if we really want to go after those technologies, what are the steps that needs to be done to get the region ready? 
Now that could include, you know, infrastructure, that could include policy, support, so on and so forth. But these require time to get the discussion going on. And what I would recommend, you know, similar to the DECA plan uh, of MOT, that we should encourage the core ports in the Delta region to start the ball rolling. So we could start with Hong Kong and Shenzhen and Guangzhou and Zhuhai, looking into these NOx reduction technologies and try to put in place the environment and the required hardware and software and to test it out whether it's workable or not. If it is positive, then that can be expanded to the rest of the river delta. So this is the second recommendation. So it's not just about field switching, it's also about NOx reduction. And last but not least, to do all the two you know, uh, recommendations I just mentioned, we need a task force. Now, I know and I understand that uh, the Environment Bureau, EPD, and the counterparts in uh, the Pearl River Delta has been meeting regularly to discuss various issues related to port and ship emission control. I would suggest that, you know, maybe it's redundant, but and maybe that's already in place, the task force. But I would say that the membership of the task force can be extended beyond government officials. We have shipping, you know, representatives from the shipping industry or from technology providers who have all the knowledge and who are keen to be involved in that discussion. So if that task force could be, you know, more inclusive, uh, that could include other players who are also important in this discussion, then this is something that I really want to see very soon in this region. And of course, you know, if it could happen, in Pearl River Delta region, it could be replicated in Yangtze River Delta and in Bohai Sea and in the rest of China. So, you know, I think these are the steps, fairly ambitious, but I think necessary steps for not just Hong Kong, again, but for the entire Pearl River Delta region to demonstrate that we are ready and we have the, the people, we have the knowledge, and, but also the, the, um, the institutional framework to take this forward. And with that, I think the rest of China will also benefit with what we're going to do in the next few years in this particular area. So with that, I thank you for your attention.